Dallas Green, welcome back to E Town. So Thanks. good to hear you sing, man. You're such a good singer. Thanks, Nick. Yeah. I um I mentioned earlier your band Alexis on Fire. When did that band start? Uh, September two thousand one. Two thousand one. Yeah. So you were somewhat younger. I was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was twenty one years old. Yeah. Wow. I am not any longer. Yeah. And um, does it? And and by the way, I understand Alexis on Fire just won a Juno Award. Yeah, we won Rock Album of the Year. Rock Album of the Year. Holy smokes! Thir- Thirteen years after we made our last record. Yeah. Pretty good. So they were. They haven't. Eight, they eight, haven't forgotten. Eighteen years after we won our first Juno. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And people, our listeners know that the Juno, of course, is like the. It's sort of the equivalent of, of the Canadian Grammy, but it's sort of cooler than a Grammy in some ways, in that it seems a little more like a tighter knit community and everybody shows up and yeah, it's it's it, it's supposed to be like a, just a celebration of Canadian music, yeah. you know. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's like it's an award show, right? So you have to like decide whether or not you want to put merit towards getting uh, an award for your music and. I've never really sort of based anything on that, but I, I do understand that the recognition of your peers and just yeah. being recognized at all as a songwriter is it's wonderful. And I understood that you were one of the few bands that actually played live music during the awards show itself. We were the only band that didn't have tracks. Wow. Wow. Which, which is, you know, whatever, that's... But, um, yeah, we were just a, just a band playing. Bunch of guys yeah. out there playing some music. Yeah. yeah. Is it ever schizophrenic for you to have those two personalities? You've got the Alexis on fire and you've got the city in color and they're, um, obviously the audiences overlap, but uh, sonically there's a big difference. Yeah, I think, well, it's taken me a long time to find my way back to figuring out how to, to do both. Like, I think like you uh, kindly said in the intro, I, I wasn't really, I didn't see either of them coming, you know? Sure. We didn't think anybody would like Alexis on Fire when we started. That's not why teenagers get in bands. No. And, <laughs> you know, so when people started digging it, that was great. But then, you know, I started to find out that people were sharing all of these uh, solo songs I had made in my parents' basement on, like, LimeWire and things. Um, so I'd, like, show up to an Alexis gig and, and kids would be like, what about your solo songs? And I'd kind of just be like, I don't... How do you know that? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so it started to become this thing where, oh, okay, there's people want to hear this other side of me. That's nice. Yeah. But then as they both kind of took off, um, I really didn't know how to deal with it, you know? And it was like having, I always try to explain it to people, like, it was like having two full-time jobs that both involved a lot of traveling, mm-hmm. you know? And I did it, I did both for a long time and... And then uh, I did. I did feel the need to quit the band and and just kind of go do my own thing. But yeah. finding my way back and being able to make both records in, the, in a couple of months apart during the pandemic was. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, had, a, you it, had a productive pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Made a bunch of songs, wrote a bunch of songs, recorded a bunch of songs, remodeled a house, built a house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all good stuff. Yeah, I was. Well, as you know, we're busy-minded people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I want to say, you know, as hard as it is for you to have to ride that, you know, that uh, sort of express train of success with those two bands, both happening in ways that you hadn't expected, um, I imagine it would have been much harder had neither of them worked out. Way, and way be, worse. <laughs> yeah, you'd, yeah. You'd be at the mini mart right now. Absolutely. Just, yeah. I'd still be working at the mall in St. Catharines, Ontario, which yeah. is where I was working when we, <laughs> when I had to leave. What was your job at the mall? I worked everywhere. I started at the Foot Locker. Yeah. Uh, then I worked at the I worked at the record store. It's called Sunrise Record and Tape. Yeah. I worked at the movie theater for a long time. Wow. I worked at the skateboard shop mm-hmm. until finally, like I, when Alexis started touring a lot, and like I'd be coming back on, on off of weekend little tours and stuff, and I would like totally forget to show up for work. And yeah. Finally, my manager Brandon, who was a beauty, he was just like. I'm not going to fire you, but you yeah. can't work here anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. And again, in hindsight, you can say thank you. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That's cool. Um, let's talk just briefly about your collection of musicians, because that's another thing I mentioned earlier. Is you've just 
there's been some luck and some good happenstance in finding the right people at the right time to both be in your band and help you make records and do stuff. And, and uh, Matt is a, is a great uh, wingman for you. Yeah, he's, he's unbelievable, really. Like, I, I met Matt 10 years ago um, when I was putting a new band, a live band for City and Color together. And over the years, it started to present itself that when I would go off and kind of do my solo gigs, it would be better if Matt came and just we gave him, like, all these instruments and he could sort of make the solo show better. So we started calling it mostly solo. Um, but then uh, over the pandemic, Matt and I just sort of discovered this completely new working relationship, uh, which was, you know, kind of starting at the beginning of the songs. And um, Matt kind of, we both sort of speak the same language. So, and he also grew up as a hardcore kid as well. So yeah. like there was no, a lot of times I have to try to explain it to people, mm -hmm. people that don't get that world that I came from. And with Matt, there's been none of that, you know? Yeah. And he's obviously also one of the most talented people I've ever met, which helps. Yeah. 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 And another, uh, another pandemic accomplishment that we should acknowledge, even though our listeners can't see, is that you've got quite the prodigious beard. This is yeah. since we last met. This, this is, is a tame version of it. Oh, really? To be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, it's, uh, it looks like it took some effort, but maybe not. It's been, yeah, it was a, it was, there was definitely like a moment during the pandemic where I just thought, I'm not going to shave or cut my hair. Yeah. Also, as a, as a person who's approaching middle age, I don't know how much longer I'll be able to do this. Yeah. <laughs> You know, hey, it's a good look. It's a good look, and uh, and it's and it's again, it's great, it's great to hear you play and sing. And thanks again for being a, a regular guy who chooses to come back to E Town. We know you've got lots of bigger places to play, and we appreciate your connection to this building and to us over the years. It means a lot. Oh man, I, I couldn't be happier to be sort of like looked at as a part of this family. I think um, in the music business, and you know this as well as I do, that uh, so much of the soul is lost in it. And I think you guys have this beautiful thing that is all based around heart and soul and what music should be. So I'm, yeah, I'll keep coming back and as long as you'll have me. Thanks, man. Thank you. Well, let's, um, let's, let's hear some more. Yeah, hear some more music. Now, some of, these, some of the songs you're playing um, are from a new record. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you, we should mention that you have a new record. I do, yeah. It's yeah. called The Love Still Held Me Near. It's, uh, it's probably the most... It was the most emotionally challenging record to make, but it's maybe the most um, rewarding experience I've ever had creating music. Yeah. Okay, cool. Is this next one from that record? No. No. Okay, good. The first two were. The first two were, yeah. Yeah, now we're going to play some, uh, some classics. Some other stuff. Some classics. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's get back to music. Welcome back, if you would. Dallas Green, City in Color. <laughs> 